Nigeria as well, election is one of strategy. And the strategy of election in Nigeria is very simple. Bribe INEC, bribe judiciary, commandeer the security. And they are done. You are about to hear the truth of what happened in 2023 presidential election. I know you know that INEC compromised that election. I know you are aware that the judiciary was bribed to legalize illegality. But this time around, the truth was being said in front of the judiciary itself, in front of INEC itself, in front of APC National Chairman Uma Ganjuge. This time around, the truth is hitting home. And everyone that was involved in that sham of an election, this time around, this truth is exposing them. Sam Amadi is exposing what happened in the 2023 presidential election in a way that has never been said before. Enjoy. I will see you at the end of the video. In every country, elections are one of strategy. So in the US today, you see policy people, strategists thinking around messaging, thinking around mapping constituencies. In Nigeria as well, election is one of strategy. And the strategy of election in Nigeria is very simple. Bribe INEC, bribe judiciary, commandeer the security, and they are done. The, the people that destroyed 23 election is INEC and judiciary. The rules were clear. The, son, the electoral act is not perfect, but it was very clear. I, I, I'm surprised that any judge who understands administrative law, which I have taught in the university for years, which I studied under the best in the world, would argue that an internal regulation built on a law, an act, a regulation, directing that you will do X, you can choose to do Y, when there is legitimate expectation and detrimental reliance. INEC was totally wrong, and the courts, Supreme Court downwards, got it wrong. When an agency created under the law with a known act and a constitution that says you can make rules, makes rules, those rules are law. They can unmake it through rulemaking process. If they don't, they are bound to obey it. Results should have been transmitted electronically. I'm ashamed. I have a PhD in law and I can stand anywhere in the world to dispute the best and brightest. I was ashamed that the court affirmed that INEC can just walk away from the law. I hold INEC responsible and I hold the courts responsible for the failure of the elections. If elections were conducted outside the rules, that is a not nullified election. You don't have to prove that you would have won. Elections should be nullified if they are conducted contrary to rules. Our jurisprudence is faulty on that. Mean that INEC should be sitting and making rulings on objections during collection of elections. I watch the drama where INEC says, call result, you call result, after I go to court. No, that's not the way. That is an intermediate procedure before adjudication in court. That is administrative hearing. You must establish the validity of those results through a process that INEC cannot make rules which the court will now review through the judicial review. So the problem in this country is not lack of good policies. We have good policies in abundance. We have policies that will ensure that every child in this country go to school. We have policies that will ensure that Nigerians are being paid welfare by the federal government. But the problem we are having in this country is implementation. And the lack of this implementation is deliberate. The people are at the helm of affairs, they make policies just to pacify the masses. They make policies just to ensure that they look good. But when it comes to implementation, they will never implement it because they know that implementing that policies will move this country forward and it will make them to be irrelevant. But that is so quite unfortunate because if you implement a policies and it goes well, the country will be good and the people will remember you for a good legacy. And general politicians don't care about good legacy. All they care about is good looting. When the 2022 electoral law was signed into law by President Muhammadu Buhari in 2022, 
many people hailed him they called him the reformer of our democracy like imagine calling president Muhammad Bari reformer of our democracy because of a policy but when it came to the implementation of that policy president Muhammad Bari shied away he hid himself and he did not even speak when that law was violated one of the most important article in that law was the electronic transmission of election results that article alone ensured that Nigerians had hope for once in their election. They came out a mass to participate in the electionary and the voting process because of the electronic transmission of results. That alone would have been a game changer in the 2023 general election. In the past, we've experienced manipulation and falsifying of results because once elections are conducted from the polling booth, the results sheet are taken to the INEC local government headquarters to be inputted on the way to the INEC local government headquarters this result are being manipulated and falsified the electronic transmission of result ensure that once elections are conducted those results will be transmitted electronically from the polling booth to the INEC IRS another important aspect of that was that this result will be viewed in real time that is according to INEC this means that the moment this result has been uploaded electronically to the INEC IRS, you can view it from the comfort of your home via your mobile phone or any device you choose to view it. That was a game changer. It happened in Osun State. Nigerians were eagerly waiting because anything outside of that, they know that that election will be manipulated. On the day of the election, three elections were conducted. The National Assembly that comprises the Senate and the House of Representatives. But when it came to the presidential election, which most Nigerians were more interested in, INEC told them that there was a glitch in the IRF, meaning the election result will not be uploaded electronically from the polling booth. That singular act of INEC compromised that election and it was a deliberate attempt to deny the people who they voted for. We know that politicians will always commit fraud. We know that politicians will always take advantage of loopholes to commit election fraud. That is the reason why we have the court. The court is the last hope of the common man. The court is the custodian of the constitution. The court is the voice of human rights in the society. If the court is compromised and every other thing in this country is compromised, INEC committed the biggest election fraud in 2023. But we expected the judiciary to do the right thing and ensure that justice is done. But the judiciary colluded with INEC, they colluded with politicians, and they legalized illegality. A report was made that in 2023, judges in Nigeria collected the most bribe. They were the most corrupt institution in Nigeria. And the reason is not far-fetched because these people collected fraud, collected bribe to ensure that they legalize illegality in this country. And it was not only in the presidential election, it cut across all the elections that were conducted in this country. That's the same reason today you are being told that Tinubu did not win the election. People are saying that Tinubu bought his way to power. And it's not far-fetched because that election was conducted in the full glare of everyone. It was a sharp of an election that should not have stood. Everything that was done illegally was allowed to go through because of one man. The constitution was changed because of one man. 25% requirement in Abuja that everyone knows that you must get 25% in Abuja before you are being sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But the judiciary laughed over that constitution and they changed the constitution to favor the aspiration of Bola Mer Tinibu. The judiciary, INEC, they imposed Tinibu on Nigerians. And Nigerians today are suffering the consequences of what the judiciary and INEC did. But we can go on and on and blame INEC and the judiciary. And what happened in 2023 will still happen again because there was no consequences to those that committed that electoral fraud. I've always said that the protests that Nigerians are doing in 2024 is a waste of time and resources. These protests would have happened in 2023. INEC announced the result by 4 a.m. If Nigerians were serious about reclaiming their country, by 7 a.m. everybody should have been on the street protesting. Everywhere should have been shut down. The judiciary, national assembly, the INEC offices, every part of this country should have been shut down in protest. 
that was the best time to protest but nigerians did not protest and now they are protesting against someone that bought his way to power are you expecting that person to fold his hand and watch you protest no he will buy everybody around to ensure that that protest is compromised and that is what he has done the protest has already been compromised and the momentum of that protest is no more there anymore and that is why i'm blaming the people from the south yes Imagine if it was a Northerner that people voted overwhelmingly for. Would the Northerners have taken that result? Would they have accepted that result? In 2023, President Muhammad Buhari lost the election against Gulok Ebele Jonathan. The Northerners, especially those from the Southwest, they went to the streets and they caused chaos, they caused riots, they killed a lot of persons. The Northerners would not have allowed this to happen. Look at what happened in Kanu State. They voted overwhelmingly for the NMPP guy to become the governor in Kanu State. But the Court of Appeal sacked him. The Northerners, they went to the street, protested, they caused unrest in Kanu State for just one day. And the Supreme Court overruled the decision of the Court of Appeal. This is what Nigerians in the South would have done. Feed every part of the country. Hold the country hostage for one day. And the judiciary will know that hey if we do anything contrary to the will of the people these people will turn this country upside down they would have given the right result but they were busy waiting for a billionaire to give them orders to go and protest i think our education and exposure is really really harming us it's making us to be very docile because when you look at what is happening in the north especially in this recent protest you will notice that these northerners are fearless they are courageous more like us in the south we are very 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 docile and that is the reason why you say that the northerners they have advantage politically more than those in the south it's not because they are created to have um advantage politically it is because these guys are fearless and they are always united in their voices whenever they want something but the people in the south we are always divided in our aspiration but i think going forward we should ensure we do the right thing because this country belongs to every one of us if we don't hold these people accountable they will continue in their ring of criminality these people don't care about the country they only care about about the criminality that is going on because they are benefiting from this criminality thank you for watching i will see you in the next video